So you want to be a camera god? Sorry, that's my best Bane voice. Alright, in this tutorial, Blender Maniacs, we are going to learn a lot of cool camera tricks, such as animating the camera on curve, switching between cameras, walk and gravity, turntable camera, depth of field, uh, rule of thirds, bokeh effect, and a bunch of other things that are really, really cool. So, let's jump right to it. Alright, let's first animate a camera along a path. Go ahead and add in a curve, go into edit mode, delete all the vertices, and then select the draw mode right there. Go to the curve stroke, change the tolerance to 12, and in top view, 7 on the numpad, draw wherever you want your curve to go. Now in edit mode, with all the segments selected, we're just going to bring them up on the z-axis as they are way too far down. Then in object mode, select the camera, shift select the curve, control P, follow path, and there you go. Now if we hit the space bar, it will follow along the path. How cool is that? Yes, I said it. Now under path animation with the curve selected, we can increase the frames right there to make it go slower. And look at that! We have a flyby through some skyscrapers. The next thing we're going to take a look at is how to switch between cameras during animation. Now we can hit control alt numpad zero to snap the camera to our current view. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit Shift D to copy the camera. And with the second camera selected, to go into the view of this camera, we could hit Control Numpad 0 and we go into that view. Now, to switch between cameras during animation, we just have to add markers. So, going to the timeline, first go to your first camera, hit Control Numpad 0, go to the timeline, and with your mouse hovered over frame 1, hit the M key to add in a marker. Then go to Marker, Bind Camera to Markers. Go ahead to frame 50 or so. Select your first or your second camera, sorry, and hit the M key again with your mouse on the timeline. And again, marker, bind camera to marker. Now, if we play this, check it out. It switches, and now we get the behind of the T-Rex. Brilliant. Now, we could just add in some location keyframes to the two cameras to add in a little bit of movement to make it more intense than it already is. And look at that. Add in a couple movements here as well. And boom, let's go ahead and play that. All right, sweet. Next thing we're going to take a look at is how to render only a portion of your image because, I mean, come on, let's be honest, maybe you don't like the rest of your image. So we're going to hit Control B and this will bring up a box select and we could box select where we want it to render out. Now if we hit render, you will see it will only render out that selection. We also have an option over here to crop the selected render if we select that right there and it will crop it so that there's not the alpha map in the back. Another thing you could do is hit Control B and select all around the whole camera so that it only renders really what the camera sees. You can see there's a red line around the camera. To deselect this, hit Control Alt B to remove the crop. The next option is depth of field. If we go to the camera and select depth of field, you can see the f-stop value here. The lower the value, the more depth of field you will have, and the higher the value, the less. Now we can select a focus object. By adding in an empty over here, this focus object will basically focus in on that object. So anything in that focus will not be blurry or will not have depth of field and everything around it or further from it will have depth of field. So go ahead and add in an empty back in the camera settings. We could select that empty as the depth of field object and check it out. Wherever you move it, it will focus on that empty so it won't be blurry and anything behind it or around it will be blurry. Sweet! Check that out. And again, you could adjust the f-stop to make it less blurry or more blurry. The next thing we're going to take a look at is how to do a bokeh effect. Now what the heck is bokeh? Exactly. Alright, let's take a little pause and see what bokeh is. Alright, it's time for Blender Mania Edumacation. So bokeh, or bokeh, is actually a Japanese word and it refers to the out of focus areas in an image or in a render. It's especially prevalent or you could see it a lot with lights. You could see the lights in these renders right here. They're out of focus, more spherical, and sometimes more hexagonal. So it's a really cool effect. We're going to see how to create this in Blender. So now you could add a bunch of blurred circles and squares and whatnot into your scene. All right, let's get back to it. Now in the Blender scene, I've added in a UV sphere and a plane. And on the plane, I've added in a particle system. All right, let's bokeh it up. Under the plane on the particle system, change it to render as object and select your UV sphere. With the UV sphere selected, add in a new material and make it emission, change the color to whatever you want, and increase the strength. Then under the world settings, we're going to make the background black. And under the render settings, we're going to turn on bloom. And boom! If we play it, we got a bunch of shiny balls falling from the sky. Positioning your camera, select your camera and enable depth of field. Because depth of field has to be enabled for this to work. Now you could 
decrease the f-stop so that's more blurry and also you could increase or decrease the distance right here so that the effect or the depth of field effect is a lot more check it out we got some cool bokeh effects now we could increase the blades right here and the blades if we put it to three a minimum of three you could see it will affect the bokeh effect affect the bokeh effect and check it out we could also play with the distance so now we got some cool bokeh effects we could also change the rotation which obviously will change the rotation of your bokeh effect let's put the blades to five as it looks more natural and real and check it out we now have a bokeh effect in blender and this could be really cool adding this to your scene i'm just going to scale up the plane and now when we play it you can see that some of the spheres are in focus and some aren't and they got the bokeh effect going Next is how to create a walk type animation. So if we go to view navigation and under walk navigation, right click, add it as a shortcut and hit shift F. Now if we hit shift F, we can hit W, A, S, and D to walk around, spacebar to zoom in. And if we hit G, it will enable the gravity and we could hit V to jump around. Jump, jump, jump around. All right, sweet. Now if we enable the automatic keyframe insertion right there, play our animation and then quickly hit shift F and G, W, A, S, and D to move around, we could follow our roll of toilet paper. Follow the yellow brick, I mean toilet paper road, ladies and gentlemen. Cool. And you can see it's adding in keyframes to our timeline. Super sweet. A really cool way to make a camera animation. Now if we play it, we can see it's a little bit choppy. So splitting the viewports, we're going to go ahead and go to the graph editor in this one. And then we could go to key and smooth keyframes right there. The shortcut key is Alt-O, so we could just hold down Alt-O and it will smooth out the keyframes. Now we can play it and it's a lot smoother. Now, if you're missing some keyframes, you could also go to key and select sample keyframes and it will sample the keyframes and you will see that we'll add keyframes in between the missing keyframes by the blue keyframes right there. All right, sweet. Next little trick is how to lock your camera to view. So if we go to the camera view, you can see if we try to rotate, it doesn't lock it to view. We could hit the end key, go to view and select lock camera to view. And anytime we move the camera, it will lock it to view now. The next thing is how to track your camera to any object, which is really useful for animations. Another thing we could do is under viewport display, we could increase the opacity so that it's like that. Go ahead and add in an empty under your camera, go to the constraints tab, and we're going to add a track to constraint. Go ahead and select the empty. You can see it goes all haywire. However, let's change it to the negative Z and the up axis to the Y axis. And now whenever we move the empty or the camera, it will track to it. How cool is that? Next thing is how to do a turntable animation. Go ahead and add in a busier circle, scale it up, and parent the camera to the circle with Control P. Then go ahead and go to frame one, insert a keyframe on frame one, go ahead a couple frames, hit the end key, and on the Z rotation, put it to 360 and hit the I key to insert a keyframe. Now if we play it, you can see it rotates all the way around. However, we want it to loop. So open a second window, go to the graph editor, and hit the end key, go to modifiers. Then select the Z rotation axis right there. And under Z rotation, we're gonna add the cycles modifier. And now if we play it, it will cycle limitlessly through the animation. Next is how to do a 2D rendering. You can see right here with the camera selected, we're in perspective. If we render this out, it renders it out as perspective. However, we could change this to orthographic and then increase the orthographic scale. And boom, just like that, we have a two dimensional render of our 3D scene, super sweet. Yay, dinosaur, rawr. All right, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is composition guides and focal length. Now under viewport display, we could go to composition guides. And if you're familiar with photography, you could use these. We have the rule of thirds where anything placed in between these crosshairs will look better in composition. Now the focal length, let's take a look at, la at that and that will be the last thing. You can see by default, it's set to 50. I'm gonna duplicate this cube and then position my camera here. Now you would increase the focal length if the objects of your render are very far. For example, if you have deers far away in the meadow, Again, if you're familiar with photography, this is kind of your zoom. It's the focal length in millimeters. Now, by default, it's set to 50. Anywhere from 50 to about 35 is a good wide angle camera lens. But you can see if it's either decreased or increased quite a bit, it starts to kind of distort the items. So use this sparingly and use this only if you're familiar with photography and actually how focal lengths work. Now with that, that is it for this tutorial on camera tricks and tips. Hit that thumbs up, like this video, make sure to subscribe as I post almost daily content. If you'd like to request a tutorial, head on over to the website and go to the request a tutorial tab. And also join the community over at blendermania3.com. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Au revoir. Au revoir.